the Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is visual management or why the lack of visual management has just cost the British taxpayer a hundred million pounds. We use technology instead, instead of visual management and that is how much it's cost us. Let's look at the case study. Let's talk about visual management. So what I'm talking about is this little thing. For those of you that are not uh, familiar with uh, the United Kingdom, this is a tax disc. Uh, the tax disc goes in your car and it's, um, it's visual management. It's an indication that I've paid the road tax, which means I can drive the car on a British road. This used to appear in the windscreen of my car. I have a little photograph, you can take a look here, look. This is the, the very disc sitting in a little holder in the windscreen of my car. This used to be the traditional way. 40, 50, 60 years, you always put one of these in the window of your car. It was visual management. And then some bright spark decided to get rid of it. We'll use a computer instead. And Here's the newspaper article. Car tax dodging sores since discs were axed. And in the article it tells us £107 million it's cost. It was going to save us £7 million a year. That was the technological solution, the computer solution. So that's what we're going to talk about. Visual management and why visual management always, always trumps technology. So let's take a look at this thing. We're going to talk about visual management. This thing in particular we're going to take a look at. Why this used to work and why the computer doesn't work uh, or doesn't work as well. Um, so this is a very common technique, uh, it's used often in lean, uh, that you visualise a standard. So you have a standard and you visualise it. Not always with a, a label where the date is indicated like this one, but this is completely appropriate. Uh, calibration stickers, if you have calibration equipment, if you have equipment that's got to be calibrated, you have a calibration sticker. And the calibration sticker always says calibration is due and there's a date. And you can just walk up to that uh, piece of measuring equipment. You can immediately see whether it's calibrated. So the power of this thing is its audit ability. Let's just think about that, okay? So the power of visual management is the power of the audit. Now we don't think necessarily of audits other than outside the formal audits. So what kind of audits do you have? Well, you love your ISO 9000 audits, don't you? You like your 5S audits. You might do health and safety. Uh, some companies do something called layered audits and all of these things are formal they are all formal audits they're all great things to do by the way you should be doing them but the power of visual management is not the formal audit the power of visual management is the constant constant informal audit by everyone and anyone okay so this is the real power of visual management. It's the informal audit, the informal check that's constantly going on. So let's think about this thing for a second. This would be sitting in the windscreen of my car. Okay, let's think about the formal audit. Who would check this? Well, walking past my car, if it was parked in the street, who could check? The police could check. Okay, so 
place we're walking past, you can easily see I was up to date or not. Okay, we also have um, traffic wardens, people that like to write us tickets to tell us we've parked in the wrong place or uh, we haven't bought a ticket that's lasted long enough, the ticket's run out. So the traffic wardens uh, would do an audit and these would be the formal audits, these are the people that can take you to court and make you feel some pain. But of course, informal audits, well the first one is I can do a self audit. Every time I got in the car, I'd see that bloody thing sitting in the corner of the windscreen and I'd know. It was a reminder that I was, I was up to date or, oh, hang on, it's run out. So to start off with, the, and I would do that as an informal thing. Every time I'd get in the car, I would know this. Self-audit, informal. Who else? Well, let's think. Um, how about your mother doing an audit? Yeah, your mother going, hey, Johnny, why haven't you paid your tax disc? Yeah, so you've got your mother, your wife, your daughter, friends, neighbours. You were on show to everyone. They could all see whether you paid your tax disc or not. It was a formal, or not a formal audit, an informal audit, but you were constantly on show to everyone. And because you were on show to everyone, guess what? This was important to you and you made sure that you kept it up to date. Now what we have, instead of the tax disc, the alternative is we have a computer system. Okay, so let's think about it. Who can do an audit? Police? No? Well, yes, let's, let's change that. Yes, but, but now it, it needs technology. So before, policemen walking down the street, you could just look, you could just see. You didn't need any technology, you didn't need to phone anybody, you didn't need a computer, you didn't need any information at all. You just needed to look at this thing. Okay, now what's he got to do? Well, he needs technology now. He's got to decide that maybe your car is dodgy. He's then got to phone up. Well, imagine him walking down the street, car after car after car, 25 cars. Does he, does he call up for every car? It's idiotic, isn't it? So they could do an audit, but of course they're not going to. Traffic wardens, can they do an audit? No. Is there anything that's reminding yourself? No. 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 Brilliant, isn't it? If you want to do an audit, it's really difficult to do. The computer system, it needs equipment, it needs training, it needs power, it needs software, it needs What do all of these need? They all need money and guess what? They don't work. They don't work. This costs so much more. This is free. Put this in the... How much does this cost? It's a little piece of paper for Christ's sake. Put this in the corner of your windscreen and then all of the checking is free. And guess what? It's free and everywhere and it works. This is expensive, difficult to do and because of that it doesn't work. That's the power of visual management. That's why it cost us a hundred million pound. Let's take a look at some other examples of visual management 
not just the, the maintenance style, visual management, stock replenishment systems, uh, all sorts of things. Let's take a look at some examples now. Okay, so let's look at these examples. So they're not exhaustive, but they're just a few examples to make the point about the, the ease of the audit, the formality or the informality. So we're going to start with this one, which of course is all about stock. So we've got the green level here, which is telling us we have enough. We have the orange level, which is telling us to order or some parts are on order. And we have the red level, which is telling us to panic. We have an abnormality. Okay. So there are the three levels. Now, I don't know. This isn't my picture. This isn't my factory. It's not one of my clients. Um, so I, I've never been, I've never been to this workplace before. But if we look at this, are we doing? Well, of course, this one here, this one should be on order. This one's okay. This one's okay. This one's okay. We're doing an audit, by the way. This one's okay. This one here looks empty. Although there's no, there's no level there. So I think that's the, that's the with these items here. Down here, all in the green, all okay. There you go. How long did that take us? It took us a minute to do an audit to say, have I got enough material? Now, of course, the operator could do this. The team leader could do this. But when a senior manager walked up, and the senior manager could be walking up to talk about last night's football match, he would instantly be able to see the status of this particular workplace for these particular standards. It's not all the standards in the area, but it's instant and it's constant. Whoever stands at this shelf can immediately do an audit and they can immediately do an audit inside one minute, less than one minute. And that's the point. That's visual management at work. So that's how we got the right material quick and easy. Okay. Have we got the right settings? Now, sometimes what you get on these dials is that people, people mark the zones. So they'll put a little zone, possibly in green here or in red, whatever, whatever's the, the proper way to do it. So that you can see that you've got it set at the right level or indeed you're, you're going into a danger area. Now we don't have that because for the three models we have up here, the settings are slightly different. So we can't have one standard setting. But if you look, it says we should be at four, 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 we should be at two and a half, and we should be at two and a half. So the applicator left, look, says two and a half. There's the dial right there. Where are we? Two and a half. Visual management. This is information. This is information at the point of activity. Super important. The idea of being at the point of activity. Everything should be easy and at the point of activity. The bottom nip left, look, this one, four bar, where are we? Four bar. Bottom nip right, four bar, where are we? Four bar. It's easy, isn't it? Do you need to know how to run this machine? Do you know it's set correctly? Yes, you do. How long did it take us? 30 seconds. Did we have to search for paperwork? Did we have to search for anything? No. Information was at the point of activity. That is great visual management. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, now then, this is tooling. Are we ready to run? Well, it looks like we are, doesn't it? I can't see anything missing. However, there's something slightly different here. Um, over here, on this side, there's some little rods here. I'm not quite sure what these things are. What, what is this thing? This, this black rod over here. And there's another one along here. What the hell's that? 
So this isn't about something's missing. Something's there that we haven't got a space for. Now it's an abnormality. Now this is the thing about visual management. What does it do? It visualizes abnormalities. So we have an abnormality. So you go up to the operator and you say, what's this? And he says, ah, that's my little rework tool. Okay, so that's my little rework tool because sometimes I have material coming to me that's got a problem. So I use that little rod to sort it out. What's that telling you? You've got a problem somewhere on the previous department. It's an abnormality. And, and now you can easily see there's a problem. That's the point. Something isn't missing in this case. Something's appeared that shouldn't be there, but it's signifying an abnormality. And of course, your job as a senior manager, your job is to be able to see abnormalities. And what do you do? You challenge and you correct them. And you keep the you keep the, the process in as good as new condition. Not just you as the senior manager, by the way, the team leader, everybody should be challenging abnormalities. Yeah, but it's visual, easy to see. Next one, this is the opposite. This is the opposite of what we just saw. Are we ready to run? No. Got a tool missing. How long did that take? Approximately two seconds. That's that was an audit. How long did it take? Two seconds. Because of visual, because of visual management. You can constantly see the status of everything. I don't know what you'd use side cutters for, but uh, if they were super important and they were a large part of the process, that could be a huge problem to you. And you could see that instantly that you walk up to your your workstation. We got tools missing. I got a problem. Same for anybody. Got tools missing. I got a problem. Constantly auditing. How about this? Happy with the wheels? Are they on properly? How long did that take you? About two seconds. This is the great thing about visual management. Speed and quality. You are making quality simple and easy to control because everything is visual. You can put an operator into an area and because it's so obvious to him what to do, training, training can be very quick. Training can be minimal. With visual management. Because it's, it's obvious, everybody can see what, what's going on. And finally, well, is an inspection label. It'd be nice, it says next inspection. I'm sure you could put a you could put a ring around the date that you want to do the next inspection. It would be great if the month um, was on this label. It's just got a it's just got a, a date of the month, uh, but it would be great if um, uh, we had the month on there. I mean, I think this is this might be the twenty four hour clock actually. So it's twenty four hours, isn't it? Um, so this is hours. So it's saying the next the next inspection is at you know eleven o'clock at night. So this is maybe for restroom, restroom inspection. But if these were dates, you could have a month. You could have a date on here. And then you could see if the date had passed. You would know. And it's visual. Yeah, so they're very simple things. They don't cost anything. They, they typically don't take power. So they're, they're low cost. I often have no power. However, sometimes they are often automatic. So the one we looked at at the very beginning, this one, it's automatic. It automatically creates a signal, but you don't need any flashing lights or power for the signal to be created. So they're often low cost, no power. They're often automatic.
they're easy to see understand react to so often they're telling you something they might be telling you where to park the car or well where to play stock or something like that so they're telling you how to react but everything is easy and quick it costs no money and it drives a huge amount of drives a huge amount of efficiency yeah so there's some examples visual management at its best use it don't use technology because technology well it's the opposite of all of this technology it costs money it needs training um, it needs power etc etc it's the complete opposite and often because it's technologically difficult and complex uh, it doesn't work um, so um, you know pull systems are an example pull systems work because they're really simple the alternative is to buy yourself a computer and have an MRP system I've never met a company that's got a good MRP system use visual management instead much better okay there were some really good simple examples of visual management go on the internet search for images visual management there's lots and lots of examples on the net uh, I just picked on a few there, some from my clients, just some from experience really. Let's just think about the power. The best companies in the world are brilliant at this. The best companies in the world are brilliant at visual management and they will use lots of it instead of technology. Save themselves lots of money and they'll create systems that work because you get the informal audit running constantly now then let's have a think how do you how do you check how you're doing how good are you at visual management give you a simple little check that you can use to really challenge yourselves and drive better and better visual management and it's basically related to the iso i suppose it's the iso 9000 audit uh, typically you're doing internal iso 9000 audits um, as well as you, you get an auditor in from outside to do it what I want you to do, I want you to go onto a, a production line, go into a production area, go into a machine, whatever it is, and just play the role of the ISO 9000 audit. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to try and do an audit in 10 minutes. I want you to try and do an audit in 10 minutes. Okay, so I want you to see, uh, let's have a no, look. What would it be? Uh, have I got the parts or the correct material? Do I know what the setting should be on the machine? Do I know the status of the machine? So for instance, uh, things like, have all the important maintenance routines been done on the machine? Is the maintenance okay? What else might be there? Um, has the operator been trained? We've got a trained operator on this, or have I just bust a guy in off the street, paid him the minimum wage, and told him to get on with it? I know you wouldn't do that, but anyway. Um, have I got a trained person? What else might it be? Um, have I got the right measuring equipment? And of course, what's the status of that? You know, is it calibrated? Um, what else might we have? Have we got quality standards? SLPs. Now think about this for a second. The operator has to come to work. He has to come into the workplace and he has to do this every day. Now he's going to work for eight hours. How long do you want him to take to do his audit? How long do you want him to go? You know, have I got the right material? Do I know where the settings are? Have I got the right measuring equipment? Well, you want him to take 10 minutes, didn't you? If it takes you, you know, let's say it takes, let's look on the bright side. I mean, let's say it takes an hour 
to do that. And lots of times, audits I've challenged clients in the past, they've spent two, three hours doing an audit, trying to see what the status of their production line is, or the production equipment. If it takes you an hour to do it, guess who doesn't know the status? Guess who can't know the status? He's never going to bother. And it's the operator. The operator's never going to do this. He's not going to do this all day. You're riding his back going, get, get making stuff. So actually, it's got to take 10 minutes. Because you've got an operator who needs the right parts. He needs to know the machine settings. He needs the right measuring equipment. He needs the right uh, quality standards. And he needs to know if the kit's in good shape, he can switch the bloody thing on. It's got to take 10 minutes. And if it takes the operator 10 minutes, it should take you 10 minutes. And that's the challenge. If you have an ISO guy standing in a production area for three, four, five hours, why bother? I just put a big cross. You know very well if it's that difficult to see what's going on, the process can't be under control. The area can't be under control. You know, world class companies are brilliant at visual management. And if you went to their workspace, you could literally do an audit in 10 minutes. All of those examples I just showed you were all instantly auditable. Instantly auditable. Literally seconds. That's the power of visual management. And also, they are auditable by everybody. So you would have the operator can do their own audit, but then you've got team leader for the area, you've got the section, section manager, you've got maintenance crews, they can come round. Who else knows? Well, the engineers, if an engineer is called to the machine, we've got a problem, will you help me? Well, if your maintenance is visual and obvious, he knows instantly whether there's, a, there's an issue there. Maybe that's part of the problem. Better get the maintenance done. Um, who else? Well, then you go senior people. Senior managers. Jesus Christ, even the HR department. Flipping heck. We can get the HR department doing audits. Man alive, that can, that can earn some money for a change. Everybody can do an audit when it's visual. All those examples, you, you could see the audit instantly. The status was either correct or there was a problem, you could see it instantly, and that's the power of visual management. It's cheap, it costs nothing, but it saves you millions and millions of pounds. And that is what Lean and Six Sigma is all about. It's about making piles and piles of cash, and one of the centerpieces of Lean is visual management. Become brilliant at it and save yourself piles and piles of money.